Okay, I'm going to continue. Uh, probably going to keep this closer so I can actually be heard. Um, and just clear things up. I obviously have no relationship to my boss, Jack Morton, that I know of. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe this Chichester connection that is as far back as, oh, 1500. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, just to clear that up. So I'm doing this kind of in pretty much independently. You know, he's not browbeating me to go make an ancestor his <coughs> or anything like that. <coughs> and that's a whole other, you know, in independence in genealogy is a whole other subject. And it'll be one element of a whole big subject that I'm going to hope to do uh, in a presentation at some other time. I'm just going to be doing this for a little while, then I'm going to go home. Okay. So, uh, where was I? Okay, so I had made this connection up to a Dr. Edward Morton, the immigrant ancestor in Canada, who had died, I believe, yeah, he died 24 September 1884, uh, around Toronto, I was born 29 March 1806 at Limstone. And at the time, all I had was a death, uh, a birth date of around 1816 or actually listed as 1816, as if it were concrete, on the death record, the official death record, by the you know, microfilm of, of the, you know, that the people at the morgue wrote down when, when he died. And I had, it was proposed that this Dr. Edward, who is my boss's ancestor, um, was in fact the same Edward that showed up in the Morton of Kilnercrot entry at Burke's Landed Gentry, and so I wanted to look into this and, and establish a connection. And I had just mentioned that um, I was looking for more information about Pierce Morton amongst all of his other siblings, but I'm only talking about what's material to make the connection between uh, that family to, to, to ascertain you know, these, the, these are one and the same families. And what I'm talking about right now is only but one piece of evidence, not not the whole gambit of it, but this is kind of like the glue that makes everything else. Yes, that's you know, when I look at it. Yes, that's right. This is you know, it, it's, it's a whole inner functionality that lets me know that it's the same Edward. Um, so his he was born, and therefore since he was working in France, his uh, four children that appear in the uh, yeah eighteen it must be eighteen fifty one census in Wales as wards um, and, and as, li as having list, list, you know, listed as having been born in Haver, France. Um, you know, they're always, whenever they go anywhere else, his you know, Pierce Morton's children, the subject, uh, all of Dr. Edward Morton's that I'm talking about, uh, relative to his brother, his brother's children were born in France, and so whenever his brother's children would go over to visit, or when they actually did, uh, when Pierce Jr. actually did go over to visit Dr. Edward in Canada, he listed himself as being born in Haver, France, and as being 18 years old. Now, actually, that's 18, must be 1861 census. I must say, I don't think I mistranscribed those years there. So, um... And it does have Pierce Edward born February 3rd, 1842. You add the 18. They took the census in 1861, but they wanted to know about the year 1860. And there you go. There's your 18, born Haver, France. Hey, we're, that's looking pretty pretty promising. Um, there were other... Um, there was one journal account of someone that had heard about the death of Pierce Morton Jr., on the boat and wrote about it a little bit and mentioned that Pierce had some family, didn't mention any names, but kind of refuted the idea that he lived with his uncle, even though the census injury has that. I looked for other Pierce Mortons born in Haver, France, in that same 1841 census amongst all the Commonwealth nations that had censuses at the time. There were none. Pierce is a unique name. Even though Morton's a common last name, Pierce is not. In between the two, I think he was probably the only Pierce Morton that was even listed in, the, in any of the British Commonwealth censuses in 1861 besides Dr. Edward's son. They're both in the same household. 
So that, I felt pretty damn good about it. Now, the additional evidence has, has come out. I've I got a, um, a document that Jill Gray had. Jill Gray is doing a, a book, and I'm very excited for anybody that's interested in the subject of Saville Morton. I'm, I'm very good. I'm very positive that uh, Jill's going to come up with a very, very good, very well documented book um, for uh, for Saville Morton, which happened to be. Dr. Edward Morton's brother and this guy in the, uh, the subject of the um, Burks Landed Gentry, his brother as well. There were a number of brothers, and I'll get into all that. Um, very interesting. The, all, the whole family is very interesting, by the way. And so once I had that, and then she sent me over this document from, from Parliament, and it basically had, had a lot to do with um, the fact that Pierce Morton, actually, even before <clears throat> uh, this this landed gentry entry came out, he actually lost his land up in Cavan County, Ireland, as a, partially as a result of the potato famine. He, you know, he couldn't collect enough rent, so so he lost it. Was foreclosed on, um, but he um, ended up. Oh, God, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, so Pier uh, Pierce Morton ended up... Um... Okay, let's just skip that. Okay, so Pierce, Pierce Morton, uh, Pierce Morton, Dr. Edward Morton, and Saville Morton, and an Edmund Morton, and another Charles, were all the, the children of a man named Charles Carr Morton. And... Charles Carr Morton has been identified in his wife's father's um, journals as being either the son of Dr. Charles Morton, the librarian, or an adopted son, although the author of this journal, Charles Tallow, is convinced that even though Dr. Morton was saying that it was an adopted son, it was in fact his son. But I'm going to uh, go over some analysis and different things about um, what what doesn't make sense about that idea and what does um, so you know basically I was able to bring this back oh I was talking about the other piece of evidence the other piece of evidence was a document that came from Parliament it was published by Parliament sent to me by Jill Gray and in that document it lists basically all the familiar relationships and it says that Dr. Edward Morton is living in Canada at the time. But another very valuable piece of information that absolutely solidifies without any doubt whatsoever <clears throat> is a document that was um, provided by one of Jack's cousins. And basically Dr. Edward Morton when he came over to Canada had a number of children but his oldest oldest child, I think her name was Rebecca, uh, and I think Rebecca married a Hornsex, so there's a Bill Hornsex, if I got that right, and for whatever reason, Re Rebecca had the family Bible, and it passed down, and they still have it in their family's possession to this day, and he had gotten in touch with Jill Gray and corresponded with her, and, um, she knew about the Bible entries, and in that Bible entry, or family journal entries, one of two, <laughs> not sure which, because I haven't seen the original, but I've seen the scans, I know they're patently authentic, um, <clears throat> includes both a description of Pierce Jr., who was born in Havre, France, his journey over to Canada, um, where he passed by actually St. Uh, St. Helena, where Napoleon was archived at one point. I'm not sure if it was around that time, actually, but... And then, um, also, the, the marriage date for Dr. Edward Morton to Rebecca Smith, uh, his birth in England in locations in, actually, Devon County that made sense with the other evidence that I had, and, um, also with, um... 
some later death records. So between all three of those documents, he was just flat out slam dunk certain that I, this connection was made. I have some more details written out at Ancestry.com, and I have yet, in that entry that I made at Ancestry.com, in, in this Morton surname um, message board, I have yet to amend what I've written there about, uh, to add that there are actually original scanned Bible records that, are, that I have in my possession, the scans, not the originals, and um, also this uh, entry from, I guess they call it the Hansard, uh, from the United Kingdom. It was published in a book, and so I have uh, copies of various pages from that book, and that, that solidifies everything. I'm going to stop, and then now I'm going to go back and get into more details.